Hello there guys and welcome back! Today we're going to be continuing with our theme of bee breeding. We're going to be building a new machine, a new item, and stick with me until the end of the video where I'm going to start the automation process of our apiary. So, starting with the new machine, we are going to be building this. This is the centrifuge from the forestry mod. Now it's not to be confused with the industrial centrifuge from the Greg Tech mod, as it has a slightly different use and works in a slightly different way. And again, being a forestry mod machine, it uses build craft power, whereas the Greg Tech one uses industrial craft power. But it's nice and easy to build, so let's head on over to the workshop. And here we are. Now this is so easy to build, it's almost laughable. So all you need is a crafting table. You're going to need a sturdy casing in the middle, a glass block at the top and bottom, and then fill the rest of the crafting slots up with copper ingots. And there you have your centrifuge. Again, as always, going to pop it down on top of the redstone power conduit because it's getting build craft power from the engines downstairs. Flip that on. Now, in between this video and the last video, I went out looking for some more beehives and I found a few. So I already had two honeycomb and I managed to get a couple more and a couple of mossy honeycombs as well from uh, sort of jungle hives. So as you can see what we've got here, we have one input slot, we have a progress bar and we have nine output slots. So I'm going to start by popping the honeycomb in there and as you can see very quickly starts working towards its goal and as a result we get a honey drop and we also get beeswax. Now you can also put propolis in the centrifuge. Propolis is something that's also produced by bees on occasion and that can be turned into a variety of things. Okay, let's try the mossy comb, see what we get from that. So it's a little bit longer because it's a slightly more complex comb but is yielding the same results. So we still get a honey drop and we still get beeswax. Now I'm very glad we've got some honey drops because we're going to need those for our next item and that is the beerlizer. So for this you're going to need a carpenter, you're going to need at least a couple of buckets of water in there if you haven't got it connected to a main supply and the recipe again is nice and simple it's two glass panes, remember not glass blocks they have to be panes in the top two slots, it does require a diamond in the bottom middle so it's not exactly cheap, two redstone in the bottom corners and the rest is filled with tin ingots and that will give you your beerlizer. Now it does require a fair bit of power going to the carpenter for this to work and it should be sufficient so let's give that a minute and wait for it to finish. And there we go we have our beerlizer so let me pick that up clear my recipe and we will turn the power off and head back out to our apiary. Now one of the first things you'll notice here is currently there are no bees flying around and that's because the queen died. I think the last two bees I placed in there was a forest princess with a meadows drone and the result has given us uh, three forest drones and a meadows princess. I'm not going to take those out of there just yet because they'll be good practice for setting up the automation to make sure that it has worked correctly. Um, as I said, I went around and found a few more beehives. I've got a couple of bees in here which probably won't work in this biome because I've got some marshy princesses and rocky princesses. Um, rocky bees require a lot of stone and cobblestone around. Well, there isn't really much here. And uh, marshy princesses, I think, are the ones that need mushrooms. I'll have to double check on that one. But the ones that I'm sure about, I have got in here. So lots of marbled princesses, meadows princesses, and we also have drones. Now, as I said before, princesses will never stack, but drones will, only if they're the same type. But if you look here, you can see we have Meadows Drone, Meadows Drone, and Meadows Drone, but they won't stack. So we've got three different bees that all have the same name, oh those ones do stack, but uh, six different bees that all have the same name, but won't stack. And that's because there are going to be slight differences between them. And this is what our Bealyzer is for. So, to use the Bealyzer, all you simply do, switch to it and right click, the same as if you were using a soldering iron. And this requires a honey drop as fuel, because you have to pacify the bee. So you pick up a bee and drop that in the top slot, and it will give you a list of traits that that particular bee has. So you can see that the Meadows drone is a very inefficient bee. It has the shortest life, 
it's the slowest worker, it requires flowers, and it will survive and prosper in normal sorts of heat and humidity. Um, we also can move the bee down to these different slots on the bee Eliza. So you can also see here the climate that it lives in, the temperature tolerance for it, the humidity. Isn't nocturnal, it won't um, live in a cave. Not exactly sure what flyer means to be honest, I think that's the sort of distance that it can reach. Possible products, honeycomb, so a little bit boring. Some of the more advanced bees you do get specialities. Possibly mutations, well we haven't um, sort of discovered enough about bees yet to be able to reveal any of that and classification because there are a <laughs> little bit of law in there for you but the most useful thing really is to just hover the mouse over the bee and you'll see most of the details about it so the idea of this is so you can tell different bees apart now the problem is they're not going to stack which is a bit of a pain because we know they're all the same type of bee so if I put those in there they have now been identified and will go in the stack uh, we'll also work on princesses as well so if we just pop another honey drop in there and put our valiant princess in so you can see the lifespan is long still has the slowest speed but it does um, work with flowers so I know that it will work in this biome and also is nocturnal so now I'm going to attempt the automation. Now the best way to automate apiaries is with buildcraft pipes because later on we can make an apiarist's pipe. And the way an apiarist pipe works is it's like a diamond transport pipe but it is specifically for beats. And you can pretty much pump in or pump out on any side with the apiary. So the first thing I want to be able to do is pump out anything that is in here. And I think I'm going to pump out from the bottom. So I'm going to dig down, get below the apiary, so I can put in my pipes, and then I'll fill the mess in afterwards. So let's go over here. Not exactly neat when I do this kind of thing, but oh well. And we're going to go into the bottom of the chest. Let's pick up all this dirt. Why can't I jump? Because I'm stuck under the apiary. Get out. There we go. Right, so. Usual trick, really. We're going to need wooden transport pipe. We'll use cobblestone transport pipes for this one. So, wooden transport pipe to allow us to pump out. I am going to put my redstone engine down. No, I'm not because that's the wrong block. Thank you. I'm going to put my redstone engine down here connected to the pipe and run my cobblestone transport pipe all the way under the ground into the bottom of the chest. Now somewhere I have some levers and let's pop one of those down next to the engine and turn it on. Very slowly the engine starts, and with any luck, we are now pumping out the bees from the output. Not the fastest of pipes, but they're going to all get sucked out and go into the chest. So let's now have a look at making the input. Okay, so it's daylight again, a little bit safer. We've drawn out all of the bees and they have gone into the chest which is fantastic and I have covered over the pipes now I'm going to have my input pipes on the uh, sort of outside I think so I'm going to need a wooden transport pipe and we're going to use the stone transport pipes this time and literally just run them straight over here to the side of the apiary going to pop down our engine doesn't look pretty I admit but it should be practical and we are going to pop our switch. Now, what you will notice is we're gonna have a problem. Okay, so bees are starting to go into the apiary. A drone has gone in, and now we have a second drone going in. 
as you can see, it's actually starting to stack the drones. Now that's not too bad, because these particular drones that are going in are all the same type. They're all the marble drones. Now the problem we're going to have is when we start getting like that, the Meadows drone, it just got spat out of the pipe, and so did that one. So, what we're going to have to do here is make a switch back, carry on with the pipes, and go back into the chest. What this should allow us to do is any bees that can't make it into the apiary will actually continue around the system. Now I'm going to take out the rest of those drones and pop them back in the chest along with all the other bees. So as you can see, we have a forest drone which has just gone into the apiary and we've got some more bees coming along. Marble Princess has gone in and there we go we have bees so the idea of making this loop is just so that the bees can constantly keep running around and any that can't go into the apiary will continue and go back into the chest of course they will keep getting pumped out of the chest and keep going round and round the pipe system we've already got another drone in there that's filled the slot that's not a problem because uh, it's not going to be able to mate with the queen it needs a princess but that's there ready for the next circuit and the good thing with having chests is you've got somewhere to store the overflow and you can always turn the engine off to stop this process from happening now later on when we build our apris pipe we will be able to sort and filter the bees now this is handy for a couple of reasons one we want all of our honeycomb to go to another chest because we don't want to keep pumping the honeycomb back around the pipe system, that's just pointless. And secondly, when we start getting more advanced bees, we want to keep crossbreeding the advanced bees and sort of filter out all of the mundane and uh, common bees. So we can have another chest for those and we can filter out all of the bees that we don't want. But for now, this is working perfectly. It's uh, still putting drones in there, but again, that doesn't matter. We're not dropping any bees on the floor, they're going around and anything new that's produced will go out of there and back in the chest. So it's pretty basic automation, but it works, it does the job. And the good thing with this system is you could quite easily place another apiary here and uh, have another output pipe coming from that apiary back to the chest. But as far as the input pipe goes, uh, you could put as many apiaries connected to this pipe as you wanted and they would all be supplied from that chest. So there you go. So once again guys, thank you for watching. Not the most elegant solution, but it does work and it is practical. Hopefully now you've got a bit more idea of how you can breed your bees and start to automate the process. And as usual, I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. If you have, please like, subscribe and share because it really helps the channel to grow. And if you have any ideas for future videos, if there is a particular machine, item or mod that you'd like to see me build and demonstrate, leave me a message or drop a comment below this video. And until then, I'll see you next time. So goodbye for now.